Hello and welcome to another Stamp Around UK video hop. Uh, my name's Linda Ellis and my website is lindaspapercraft.co.uk and I'm an independent stamping up demonstrator. And every month I get together with a load of other very talented stamping up demonstrators and we have a video hop. And this month's theme is the In Colours, which is 10 colours that... Um, they come in groups of five, they last two years, we get a new group of five every year um, and they are um, the designed to be more on trend rather than the core colours because obviously there's more flexibility. We change core colours about once every six years which has just happened so we've got lots of lovely new colours um, available at the moment um, but I'm choosing something from this year's in colours so they'll be around until 2025 and last year's in colours and they will run out in June, May, June-ish 2024 so next year. Um, so, uh, as I say, I'm taking part with loads of other stamping up demonstrators. So if you just look in the details below, you'll see a link to all the other um, demonstrators so you can go through the hop once you've watched mine. That will be lovely. Uh, loads of ideas of using all these colours in different combinations. We could use all ten. Um, I've decided to stick to three. So I'm using Copper Clay, Orchid Oasis, starry sky and i'm also going to show you the best way to cut this out so this is what it looks like this is the whole piece okay so as you can see it's beautifully uh detailed die cut and i have to say i bought this die set from the two-tone flora and thought this is never going to work and um sort of slightly fell out of love with it because i couldn't get it to cut as crisply as I wanted to. Anyway, I watched a video by Patty Bennett, uh, one of the U United States um, demonstrators and <laughs> sorted, <laughs> absolutely no problem now, cuts out beautifully. So I'll show you the tips on how to get that to cut out really, really well. Okay, and that's it against the copper clay. I'm loving this. It really is a coppery color. So that is, as I say, one of the new in colors. Right, so we shall get started, as they say. Let's pop these. I've done all the stamping and die cutting already, um, just because most of you know already how to stamp and die cut, and I can't edit videos. Um, well, I can, but it takes me forever. Um, so it's easy. I'm, I'm a one-shot gal. Um, so let's get on. So the, the um, tools, products I've used, um, apart from the colours, are... So deckled rectangles, so this cuts out this little frame here. The two-tone flora bundle, so that's the flowers and leaves and the background are in this. Then charming sentiments, because... The uh, more observant of you would notice that came from the Celebrating You stamp set, which is now retired. So one of the conditioners we knew, we use current stuff. So I've turned to Charming Sentiments. Equally good, loads and loads of different sentiments in that. And then I'm also using the tailor-made tags, which is what this is. Just a little cut out there. Okay, so... Leave that there, just get that lot out of the way. So... Right, so here's my stuff. So there's one I've already cut out, put that to one side. So we have a um, basic, weight, basic white A6 card blank. Uh, now, because we're in the UK um, and Stamping Up is an American company and American cards are slightly wider and shorter than ours, it doesn't exactly or easily fit on the front of a card set and it just cuts out the detail it doesn't cut the edges so again i was a bit like mm, what am i going to use that for anyway what i came up with was if i use a frame then it doesn't matter that we can't see the edges um because the frame becomes the edge of the pattern okay so i've die cut that out of a standard piece of card so that's 14.4 uh, 14 by 10 centimeters and I've just used the second largest deckled rectangle to cut that out so I'll use that on another project so now this um, copper card is just slightly smaller it is literally like a millimeter smaller just because I didn't want 
like oh yeah I didn't want it to be seen um, outside the starry sky I want that to be a background not a frame I am just going to whip a little bit off the end of that I think it still might show so just taking so I'm taking that down to 14 centimeters and it is 9.8 centimeters wide so it's just not showing top and bottom Okay, so that just goes on there. And then this is what I'm going to show you how I cut this out. And then I've got all my dies in my trusty Asda yogurt pot. Everyone should have a trusty Asda yogurt pot. Right, so, okay. As you can see, very, very detailed. And because, so this fits... This is slightly narrower because our cards are narrower, um, but I've made it the same length. So this, I'm going to put the measurements in my blog, um, but this is just short of 14 centimetres by nine and a half. And you do need your big machine. So I'm going to get my big machine out. Right, so I'm just going to check. You can see everything I need is yes you can I might do this stood up anyway so that you can definitely I can definitely check you can see right so the first thing we're going to do is actually put the die upside down so we've got all the cutting edges facing up then we're going to put it at an angle and that's because if that all goes through first it's sort of the rollers struggle more so when you hear it making all those good awful noises it's because you're putting a flat edge through usually not always and then i am going to place my paper carefully on top so as you can see as i said it's smaller than the die itself and then i'm going to put my top plate on now with most stamping up dies we go through once and it's perfect. So, but because this is so detailed, I recommend that you go backwards and forwards a few times. Okay, so that's the first time. And I don't, you probably can't see, I can see it hasn't cut all of them yet. So I'm going back the other way and then I'm going forward again. So that's three times I've sent it through the machine. And then I'm going to take this off and carefully look. Now it's quite fixed in the die now. So if there were any bits I wasn't happy about, and there is just a little bit there that I'm not sure it's gone 100% through. So I'm just going to turn it the other way. And get all the bits off. Just chucking them. I wonder why I always have to hoover my floor in here because it's covered in bits of paper. And I'm just going to send it back again. She says, come on. There we go. So I'm just sending it back again. Just to get it through a different part of the roller. And we'll pop that off again. And I'm happy now, if you have a look there, that all those die cuts have been done. Okay. So I'm happy that they've cut everything out. So let's get this monster out of the way. So. There we go. And then I'm going to get my little pad and my brush which has escaped me. There it is. And I'm just sorry about the noise. This is the easiest way. We no longer stock this brush, but we do have a dye brush that goes on the end of your pick and stick tool, which will do this just as well. This is the old stamping up one. And 
this just gets most of the details out so that you're not having to do it yourself with the poker tool. Okay, so look at that. That There's something quite satisfying about that, I think, when everything is just stuck to that little mat. Okay, so we've still got a few little bits. Get rid of that in the paper bin. And then I'll just go over it once more. So a few bits there that are still in. Oh, that's come out just by being moved. Come on, you can do it. <laughs> yeah, I think we're mostly there. And now the scary bit. So you need, because it's not got a border all the way round, because if I had a border all the way around, it would be too big for a UK card. You could make it bigger and then trim it down to the size you wanted if you want. So, it was straight. Right, so I am just going to lift from both ends. It's a bit more fixed in this end. Are you going to go? Come on, come on, come on. And because you sent it through so, so many times, it is gripping it, but I think it's worth it just to get all those details out. Okay. So, and I'm just gently working my way down the die, lifting little bits up at once, not pulling too hard because I don't, after all that effort, the last thing you want to do is rip your die or rip your project rather it's not a die ripping a die would be quite amazing talk amongst yourselves it's well and truly well and truly stocks it's coming now just going to come from this side there we go just getting the last little bits Oh, and there we are. Perfect. How beautiful is that? Absolutely gorgeous. So, a little bit stretched because we pulled it out. And just a couple of pieces there that we need to get out. So remember your die etiquette. You've got to get all the bits out before you let the next person use it. Okay, so there we go. Right, so I'm going to get my silicon mat out because I don't want to get glue on my paper. And I don't know why I'm looking over there for this piece of card. <laughs> so I'm just going to check that that still fits. It does. That's perfect. So we're just going to put lots and lots of dots of glue on here. Obviously, the main part, it is actually going to be held onto the card by the frame. Which is going to go around it like that. So, But uh, you don't want any bits lifting. So, obviously, these bits really easy. All the way along the bottom and top. And then these nice big areas, very easy to glue. Just random dots everywhere. And then you need to get sort of little dots on these leaves. And where they're loose, so where they're not attached to anything else, you really do need to stick them down, otherwise they'll start poking up. Okay, there's lots of different ways you can do this. You can do it with a sponge dauber, you can do it with a sponge that you just use for glue, you can do it with your fingers. Um, you can use the double-sided sticky, but my concern with that is you're putting another layer. And you know, it's already a very detailed die. So trying to get that through another layer as well. And you've no wriggle room with that. Once it's down, it's down and it's staying. So a few more dots over here. And if you're not happy you've got every single bit, you can always go back with a cocktail stick afterwards. Put some more dots. You see, I'm not overly bothered. I'm not bothered at all that I'm actually going through onto the silicon paint, onto the silicon mat, because that will just wash. Oh, are we happy? I 
think we are. Just put some little bits on those thicker bits there. Oh, none on these leaves. Let's just get these leaves. Tiny weeny drops of glue. Okay, and I think we're about done. So I'm just going to carefully lift that off. You see all the little dots of glue there. I'll let those, well, I can either wash it straight away or let them dry and then wash it. And then I'm just going to pop that down onto the copper clay. Okay. And then glue it. I'm just going to turn it over. And then just rub so all the bits are going to stick down so I've still got some glue that's ended up on my paper <laughs> but you're not actually moving any of the bits you don't need to worry about any extra glue it does dry clear there we go a lovely glob of it there let's get that off and there we are okay and then what we're going to do is just put some glue around the edge of the frame here so I'm on the wrong side and I'm just putting glue around the edge of the frame and I'm going to stick that on top of this so so it is just slightly smaller than the piece of card. There we go. But you can't see any of the copper from the outside. How beautiful is that? It's just the white against the copper clay and then with the starry sky. I think they, they contrast beautifully. And then they just stick this piece on the front. down so it's ready when I need it again make sure you've got it the right way up I, I just feel that the bigger flowers are at the bottom it just feels it's sort of heavier here and gets lighter I think that's yeah that's upside down the flowers are growing up the dye so there we go so then we can work on our decorations so I've used slightly different flowers and now I've the way I've stamped the flowers is I've stamped the detail in Orchid Oasis and then I've stamped the background in Orchid Oasis but I've stamped it off first so this is second generation stamping is the um the body of the flower okay so I'm just going to pop those on there so I've got some dimensionals I'm using up the edges of my dimensionals at the moment as you can see oh that's done Okay, so just going to pop a couple of little pieces on this one. I think I'll just put that one going that way. side here so because it's overlapping the other one there we go and then I think oh no there so some of these are on dimensional some of them are flat I think I might do them flat for ease so I'm going to put one coming out of there she says there we go And 
then one coming out from between the flowers just there and then the third one sort of over here I think Over here and these are in starry sky first stamp first generation stamping starry sky and then i've stamped and die cut my sentiment out using the copper clay so that it tones with that and i'm going to pop that on some dimensionals what have we got on here that i can use oh, whole ones <laughs> so one and I'm just going to tuck that under the flowers so like it's just a little tag okay so just pop that there under the flowers and if you cover up the hole you don't need to put any string in it <laughs> and there we go so that's two slightly different cards using the two-tone flora which I absolutely love and we're using the copper clay where's my ink pads gone there they are so the copper clay the orchid oasis and the starry sky out of the new ink colors so I do hope you have time and you make the time to go and hop along to all my colleagues who've done all these cards and share the love lovely thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already and I will see you again on Thursday with another coffee and card and next month with another Stamp Around UK thank you very much for watching bye <laughs>